ready for it. Did you have a question? All right, so um, if you um, get to the point of this part of our uh, stuff, you remember where we left this off, where we had this symmetry stuff set up, where we have our drone, and we have the little cabling inside here, and we have these other parts, okay? So what I want to do now is just customize this a little bit more. Even with all of these things that I have grouped over there, I can still go back and edit my original dude. So my original guy, which is way back here, I can still edit him. I can still click on that, still click on points, still grab points here, like so, and still move them. And when I do, it's gonna move all of the other stuff. So it's gonna update as we go. The only um, asterisk on this is to be careful because as you do this, the more complex it is, the slower it's gonna go and the more likely you're gonna make a mistake. So just be careful when you do something like this. So I'm just gonna give the top of this more of like a bubbly kind of look. There we go. So I like that, it just gives a little bit softer look there. Uh, maybe I want to grab I don't think that point actually exists. I think he's just hanging out. I'll grab these points and this point and this point. And just kind of bring this in a little bit. And you'll see how I'm just kind of square or uh, rounding this off some. Okay. And what's neat about this is being able to see this side too. Maybe even turning off my lines so I can verify that it's going to be nice and smooth. Okay. Now, even though I'm doing this, I still want to jump back and look at it in this mode because I want to verify that I'm not going too far this way. If I go too far this way and I do something like that, that's going to be a bad thing, okay? Even if on my other version it looks fine, you can see the difference, okay? So I have to make sure that I don't ever cross these things, okay? I'm even going to give this more room just so that um, it'll be a little bit smoother as it's going. Now I believe there's also a slide tool. Let me see. M, and then there's a slide tool which is O. So if I were to click on this point, I can basically just like slide it along here. So it keeps it in the same spot, but then allows me just to um, move that point down further, allowing it to be a little bit smoother when I do hit this button. So now you can see how smooth this is coming around here. I can do the same thing over here, just kind of smooth this out. There we go, nice and smooth, cool. All right, and on the bottom, I do want this to be a bit square, so I'm gonna keep this pretty square. All right, so that should be good. All right, so now my next part that I'm gonna do, um, and eventually, like I said before, this isn't gonna be created like this. These are all gonna be separate pieces. So I'm doing this as a pre-visualization so I can see what it's going to look like. Um, but I eventually will just pull it out, do what I need to to the individual parts, and then group everything back together. Because when I do this, um, I kind of lose the ability to individually rotate my propellers. If I go here to my rotate, and I rotate one, you can see how they all rotate at the same time. Now that might be a good thing if we wanted all of them to rotate at the same time, but sometimes you want just a little bit of hesitation when you do some of your stuff, okay? So, like I said, this is just for pre-visualizations. Um, so I need to create a couple things. One, I need to create a little barrier here so that my propellers don't get hit, uh, so that as they're propelling, that they don't like hit stuff. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, I'm gonna try this one way first, and then we'll see how that goes, okay? Um, every time you model something, look at it in a way that um, is just kind of like a test. You're testing it out to see if it works, and you get the end result you're looking for. No time have I ever modeled something, and it been the best way that I've done it. Even if you watch some of the videos, and then you ask me later about how I did something, sometimes I'll explain it a different way, because today I'm modeling things differently than I did yesterday, or the day before, or tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna use a cylinder and I'm gonna go to my um, caps and turn my caps off because I don't need caps for this one. And I'm gonna go to my object. I'm gonna shrink the height down. Now this is gonna be a guard for all of these propellers. So I don't want this thing to be like super chunky or super thin. I wanna find a good medium for it. 
And then here's my radius, so I can pull that up. Now I want to model this right here for now, but I'm just going to scoot it over just so I can get an idea of how big that is, okay? So a little bit smaller probably. Let me go to my top view. No, that should be good. That should be good. Okay, so I'm going to hit undo to bring it back. All right, and then I'm going to take my divisions down. Um, when you have this many divisions on something, it becomes very difficult to try to work with that many divisions. So what I want to do is keep my divisions as low as possible. Um, now, the way that I want to do this, let me jump back to this. Um, drone. So as you look at some of these, you can see how they have these little uh, fences or little guards on it. Um, I'm gonna create something like that. Uh, but each one of these little pieces coming out. Now I could, I could uh, decide, do I want to model these as one piece or do I want to model these as separate pieces? I'm going to model these as one piece. So these guards and these pieces here are going to all be one continuous piece. Now what I want to do is this line of where this is, I'm going to do an extrude and I'm going to pull out the edge right there to create that shape. So I need to make sure that my edge is that size. So an easy way to do that is just by using this. So if I just sent this to, let's say 42, okay? If I set this to 42, this width right here is the width that I would be extruding out to create that shape. Uh, maybe I want it thinner. I don't, but let's just pretend I did. 64, so now it's thinner, okay? So the more divisions, the thinner that's going to be. Now remember, I can also get rid of edges. So even though I'm, I'm adding a bunch of divisions now, I can always eliminate edges I don't need later on. So um, I liked it at 48, I like 48 better than 42. And then we'll go to our um, points. And oops, I have to hit C so I can edit this. <clears throat> or maybe I don't. Uh, I can go to slice. Uh, if I go to slice, you can see how I can actually slice this before I edit it. Then I can jump back to my divisions, and then I could, of course, shrink these down even further till I get the size that I want. So if I slice this to 90 degrees, you can see what this gives me. It gives me like this little half circle. And if I look at this, you can see that this is basically just like, not a half circle, a quarter circle uh, of a shape. I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna go to maybe 135. That looks good there. And then I can go back to my object. I can go and play with my divisions. 16 looks good, okay? So I like the amount of divisions. Don't use every number that I use. If I typed in 16 and I typed in 135 here, you don't have to use those numbers. Your design is your design. I don't want anyone's coming out looking exactly like mine. I want you to play with the tools and understand the tools. That's why you're here, okay? So cool, that's there. I'm going to hit C so I can edit it now. And then I'm going to go to my edges, and I'm going to pick the edges that I want. So imagining that this thing, and I should probably rotate it first so, so I have an idea of where it's going to be. Like, uh, That's probably good there. And just to be kind of exact, I'm going to go with negative 20. There we go. It always helps to have nice round numbers. If you have some weird numbers, sometimes things don't translate as nice. Um, so now I can take my shape here and I'm just going to move it where it needs to be. So I'm just going to be in the top view and just move it over to, there you are, here. Right there, okay? So you can see that this is now pretty much centered uh, where my propeller is, right? Or where the center of this is is where that item is. I could turn my snap on and use my snap to snap it right to it. All right, I can jump back to here, and there we go, okay? And then I'll just lower this down so that it's more appropriately spaced. Yep, that should be good. All right, cool. So now I need to attach this. I can't have this obviously flying around the side of it. I need to attach it to the body. So I'm gonna go to uh, my snap and turn that off. And I'm just going to grab some edges. Now, I kind of like on this one how there's a little bit of a fence here, and then the first pull starts. Same thing on this side. So I'm going to skip the first two, let's say, and grab this one. Skip the first two and grab that one. Then if I go to the middle, it looks like it's about here. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to grab both of those. 
four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So because I have my own design, I can customize it. I can make the, the middle one a bit thicker than the other ones. So now I'm going to go to extrude, and I'm going to extrude this down. Now you'll see how this is extruding it not in the direction I want. I don't care if it goes in the direction I want, because what I can do is just let go, then switch to my scale tool, and then just scale all these oops, together. So I hold shift until they all go together. I switch to my move tool and just pull them down. Okay. So now all those are lined up exactly where I need them to be-ish. That's good enough. And then I'm going to extrude it again. So I go back to my extrude tool, and then I drag it in. Now again, it's not going in the same direction that I need it to. It's going in, it's going in whatever direction it feels like it. So I'm just going to let it do its thing, go to my scale tool, T, hold shift, and then snap these together. Oops. There we go, right to zero. Then I can go in with my move tool and just move these in. Okay. Now I'm going to use my top view as a way to kind of line this up. So I'm going to bring this in here like this. So you can see that this one kind of comes in like that. I'm going to grab this one and pull him in. I'm going to grab this one and pull him in. Roughly about the same spots. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to notice. And then I just need these to go maybe a little bit more into that. Okay, so let's keep both views open so we can see it. There we go. All right, so now you can see how those are like actually like attached to that. And then I'm going to grab each one of these edges here because I don't want these hard corners. I want bevels, so I add a little bevel. There we go. Maybe a couple more divisions. That should be good. What? I could, just like this. Oops. Like that. See, the more I take that. Thicker? Yes. Yes. We will give it some thickness, but I want to add this in first. Okay. So, um, however big I want this to be, like that actually looks kind of cool like that. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Now, I did this for a reason. I, I created this whole shape first, and then what I'm going to do is do an extrude on the whole thing and give the entire thing thickness. So now I go to extrude, and I click and drag on it. Oops. i got to be in face mode. Darn you, cinema. Let me grab all my faces first here. Selection mode. Grab it all. Make sure I have my tolerant on. Make sure this is off. Now I go to extrude. And then I can extrude this and give that thickness. And then I can say create caps and it'll create the caps there. Okay. Make sure my propeller is not going to hit it. I think I'm in the clear. And then we should be good there. Okay. Now my last step I need to do is add bevels to this. Bevels should be everywhere. You should never have like a full 90 degree corner because it'll look super fake. You want to have some sort of rounding right at the corners. That's what's going to make it look more realistic. So if you remember back to our room when we did that, that was one of our tasks we had to do for the desk. So I'm going to grab all the edges. I'm going to go to my um, select, and I'm going to say select fong break. And remember this one um, allows us to select based on the fong um, uh, direction. Okay. So right now it's selected everything still. So I'm going to go to my cylinder here, go to the fong say 20. Oops. I'll try that again and bong break. Nope. Angle limit, use edge breaks. Let's try that. Oh, oops. Hmm. <laughs> Grab that again. There we go. So I'm gonna set this to like 60 or uh, yeah, 60 should be fine. I'm gonna marquee it. There we go. Select fong break selection, and then I can just marquee this whole thing, or no, select all. That's what it was. There it is. That select all. The uh, button here threw me. 
All right, so that selected all my stuff. So just to see that again, um, set this to something lower than 90, so something like 60 works good. Then you go to your Fong Break selection, and then you say Select All, and it grabs every single edge that's a corner. Then we can go in here to our bevel and just add a slight bevel on this. We don't want it to look squishy and soft. We just want to have a nice little rounding. Okay. Now what that also gives us is the ability to smooth it out later. So if we don't like how, like let's say this is kind of jagged, okay? We can always come to the cylinder here um, and we could add a subdiv to it and that will help soften some of those transitions some. So here it is without it, here it is with it, so you can see how smooth it is. If I didn't put that bevel on there, all those areas would basically just like fall in on itself. Here's a cube. Okay, if I put a subdiv on this cube, you can see it basically just turns to a ball, right? So that's what we don't want. If we take it, uh, let me just disable that. If I take the edges of this and I add bevels to it, when we go to subdivid, you can see that that top piece stays crisp still. Where the bottom, because there's not main divisions, it gets soft and round and squishy. So that's why we did these bevels over here so that it would look nice and neat. Now I do want to undo a couple steps because I am getting some weird edges right there. Okay, so if I look at my shading, you can see how it beveled right there. So I'm going to undo. And this is where that fong break, sometimes it doesn't do a good job. Um, so let's go back to edges. And what I'm going to do is just deselect any of these areas where I'm seeing that it shouldn't have done. Like it shouldn't have done this or this. So I'm holding control and just double clicking it. And then control will deselect. Okay, so I think that should be good now. All right. So let's put a little bevel on it again. There we go. And something messed up there, let's try it again. Nope, it's definitely not playing nice now. Let's go back to points. And this is one of the things I don't like about cinema is it seems like I have to do this optimize quite often. Back to edges, back to my bevel. There we go. Now you're playing good. All right, cool. All right, so now we have this item. Now this we could again drop into our main null group and you'll see that it instantly pops into the other areas and then we can see what it looks like over the entire thing. So that looks pretty decent, I like that. Um, let's go and save. Now I want to put a little cage on the bottom, so if you look at this drone here, it has these little legs. So if you were to have a camera, you would have a spot where the camera would not hit the ground when it landed or took off. Okay? Or you have something like this, where these little legs just kind of stick out. Okay? That's another, obviously, uh, alternative. So again, I'm going to create this using a cube to start. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically creating a shell. Like imagine if you looked at this item from the side and you just had a pencil and you just drew a line of what the shape of it is. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm creating this shape. I'm just going to hit C because I'm not going to change anything on this. Um, here's another tip. Like I've been going before to faces and then deleting faces. And then going back to vertices when I needed to, deleting the vertices. So I found you can go to edges and if you just marquee the edges and delete it'll also delete the faces and delete the vertices so you can take that home with you uh, there we go alright so here's one of my legs I'm gonna move this a boot here there we go I'm gonna give it a little bit more design too so I'm gonna go in with my knife tool switch to my edges make sure that my settings are okay here and I'm just gonna drop in a loop like in the center of this and maybe I'll drop one in here and here too okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grab these edges right there and I'm just gonna pull this over okay and what that does is it just gives me a little bit different look than something that we just saw in a picture if we make it a little bit different look but still make it believable, it's kind of like 
uh, turns out much better than if we just try to copy theirs. And let's say we fell short on that. Um, I think I'm gonna pull these out too. Whenever you're copying something, it becomes very tricky because people know what it's supposed to look like. They know what to expect. So if you have your own design, then it is your own design. You can do what you want with it. All right, so there we go. So now I'm gonna go to faces. I'm gonna grab all the faces. I'm going to go to my extrude. What? Let's go this way. Uh, oh, I wanted, that's what I want to do first. I want to put a bevel on this corner first. So I'm going to go here and go here and just put a little bevel on it just to give it some rounding. So that's good there. Okay. Now I can go back to faces, back to selecting my faces, back to uh, extrude. There we go. All right. So that looks pretty good there. Now, again, um, I have the ability or I have the, the need of having a bevel on this. Um, hit Control R when you're rendering or when you're looking at your stuff too, and a lot of these things will really jump out at you as needing to be done. You can look at these surfaces here and see that they look pretty smooth and pretty nice. If you look at this one down here, you can see how blocky and, and kind of crappy this looks. So we want to fix it up. So we'll go back to edges. We'll go back to our select fong break. We'll say select all. We'll switch back to the move tool and hold control and deselect anything we don't want selected. And I could probably lower my, um, or raise my number a little bit and it wouldn't select those, but it's no big deal. It's only a couple of them. A little bevel on there. It's too much. Point zero five. Nope, uh, point one. That should be good. All right, so that's good. Now, I can't drop this piece into my symmetry group, okay? If I do, so I'm going to drop this into my null. Now, you didn't see it happen, but what happened is my piece that's here it symmetrized it this way, okay? So basically it's just like on top of itself. Because we don't have four copies of this, we only want two, I can't drop it into this group. Now if I look at this one, I gotta remember which one this one is. Um, this one, and then this one, and then that one. So I can try dropping in this one, but I don't think that's gonna do it either. Nope, I just broke half of it. <laughs> Uh, never no. So yeah, so I just have to basically just do the symmetry one on this one all by himself, which is fine because that's what we'd have to do anyway with him. So symmetry, drop the cube in there. There he is. And then I'm also going to put a subdiv on this. Cool. Oops. And you'll see I made a mistake. See how soft it is there? I don't want that to look that soft. I want that to look um, a bit harder. So I'm going to solo this. So before what I was doing too, this is another thing I found out, this S over here is solo. So if I just grab an item and hit solo, now the item's all by itself. I can work on just the item without seeing all the other stuff there. So I'm gonna switch to my edges, switch to my um, loop tool, and I'm just gonna drop in a loop, a couple loops right up here, okay? It doesn't really matter where, I just wanna get them close to this edge. And what it's gonna do is hold that edge better so that when we do add symmetry and then we do do the subdivision, it doesn't get like soft at the top. Okay, so that's what that was doing. So now I can unsolo this. And there we go. Okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I do have something weird happening now. You can see that there is definitely a, um, like a double edge happening right here. And that looks kind of weird. I think if I went back to my cube shape, my original cube shape, and looked at the edges of this, let's say from the top. Yep, you can see I'm kind of over that line. So you see where this blue line is? That's my mirroring point. 
okay? So I can't be past the mirroring point because what's gonna happen is it's gonna mirror like on top of itself. So I have to make sure that I don't do that because that's a bad thing. So I'm gonna go and grab my selection tool. I'm gonna double click this. Okay, you can see how it selects it right to this edge. I'm gonna turn on my grid snapping. So work plane snapping, grid point snapping, click it to the right. Uh, whoop, one more. Right there. Nope, I think I'm scaled too. I think I'm kind of off a little bit. So I'm gonna go to my scale and just grab the red, hold shift, and then snap it in alignment. And yep, I definitely am off a little bit there. So that's what happens. So let's just move that. And you may not obviously experience that. That just might be me. And now I'm trying to snap it. I may need to zoom in some more. Right there. Okay. So that should be good. Now let me check the other direction too. The other direction is doing the same thing. So again, I'll hit T. I'll scale this. Hold shift. There we go. Go to my move tool. And then snap it right to that yellow line. All right, so that looks better. Now we still have a hole in this and that's just because of how we grouped and labeled all of our stuff, okay? So I think I'm at the point in this, let me just unwireframe it so I can see it. I think I'm at the point of this where I'm really ready to um, lock this main shape into an actual solid object, okay? So I'm gonna pull it out of this group and I'm going to pull all of these items out I can delete the null now, I don't need that. And I'm going to delete these symmetries too, just so I don't get confused on what's doing what. Okay? Alright, so let's see what we have here. I don't need this random. Oh, I do need the random, because that's my coil. My motor housing is that, my body is this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to focus on is the body. So I don't want this um, subdivision on the body yet. So I'm going to go back to where I had just that. So I just pull it out of there, delete that smoothing, that subdivision smoothing. And then I'm going to do my symmetry on this. So I'm going to go up here to symmetry, drop my main cube in, and then I get my symmetry. And then I can just click on this. Um, this is welding it, so you see where it says weld points. Um, tolerance is here. Sometimes you have to lower the tolerance one, so like that, just so it doesn't accidentally weld something it shouldn't be welding. I'm going to turn my divisions on just so I can see it. And just to give you an idea, if this is set too high, let me zoom in a little bit more here. There we go. If this is set too high, what it sometimes will do is it'll start merging things that we don't want merged. And if you look at this, you can see there's definitely like a weird face right there now. If I set this back to that, then we don't get that. But we do get something else weird kind of happening. And I think this is again, those two faces kind of coming together. So let me turn my symmetry off for a second. And yep, I still am. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure I've grabbed everything here. And this is another good way to kind of do that is by going into this top view and using your edge, using your selection, turning off tolerant and grabbing it. So what this does is it grabs all the edges that I've just marqueed. Then I can go to my scale and flatten that out. Then I can go to my move tool and move it in the alignment. Okay. So now when I go and turn my symmetry back on, you can see it's a bit closer. Now it's still not perfectly lined up. My snap must not be working. Let's go back to my snap. Uh, oh, I said work plane. I didn't have grid uh, point snap. I can do grid line snap because I'm just snapping it that direction. There we go. So that should be snapped perfectly. There we go. Alright, so now it is snapped perfectly. We are getting something weird happening here, but we'll fix that. So we'll deal with that uh, in a minute. All right, cool. So that's that. Now we can take this symmetry and do the same thing the other direction. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go and make sure that it's set up correctly. So I'm gonna grab the cube. I'm gonna go to my edges. I'm going to marquee it. Okay. 
You can see here I have two selected because of how it's lining it up. So I just need to flatten it out again and use my move tool to snap that in. Good. All right, so now let's do another symmetry on here. There we go, drop this in here. Set this to the other direction. <clears throat> so if I look at this, this is the Z direction going this way. Okay, blue is Z, you can see the color matches. So I wanna pick the one that doesn't have Z, which is XY. There we go. All right, so that should be good. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hit C to make it an actual object. Okay, so C makes it editable, basically just says everything that's here, just do it. It was an object, okay, and then we did a bunch of stuff to it and then we did the symmetry things. So we basically want to say we don't want to adjust these symmetries anymore, we want to lock it into an actual solid shape. Okay, so that's what that does. So now I can pull it out of this group, I can delete these things, and now he is a solid object like we modeled him as one solid object. Now I still want to go through this and just verify that I don't have anything weird. Like I said down here, I had a weird face kind of like right there that looks odd. So if I go in here and grab this, whoops. Well, let's see if it actually causes any damage. I'm not sure if that will. So we go to the cube. Uh, we'll put it in a subdiv. There we go. We'll turn our lines off. Yep, you can definitely see it's causing something weird there. There's a definite pinch right there. Okay, and that's why we have to look at this stuff because we have to be able to fix it. So I'm going to uh, pull it out of the subdiv, delete the subdiv. And it looks like I actually have some stuff happening here. That might just be my grid. That's my grid. Okay. So I'm going to rewind this. Not rewind it, but zoom out until I find that. There it is. So I'm going to click this and delete that. And same thing here. I'm going to click on, if I can. It is it's super tiny. Whoa. There we go. So I use my live selection to select it and then I can delete. Bless you. There we go. So I'm clicking and dragging to select it. Spin around and grab this side. And I can hold control and deselect the other stuff and then just hit delete. So now if I were to put a subdiv on this, you can see that that ends up turning out a, nice, uh, a lot smoother than it did before. So now probably on the other side we have the same thing. So I just wanna check it and make sure uh, this is the time to do that kind of stuff, not like right before we're rendering. Yep, and you can see there's one here also. Now where it came from, I don't know. It just popped in there, so we just deal with it. So delete that, delete that. Oops. That was great. Delete that. There we go, nice and smooth. Okay, now just for fun, I'm going to check this side too. But this is where all these came together, and it's very likely that if it happened in one spot, it could happen anywhere else that we've done this mirroring. Right, it seems like, it, yeah, it is it's always happening like right there on one of those edges. There we go, and then guess what? One more on the other side. Okay, so you can see this process is just the same kind of thing. You just have to look out for these little troubled areas and then just assess, how do I fix this? Easiest way is just go through Make sure you select the right stuff, deselect the stuff you don't want, and then delete. There we go. And then we can turn our subdivision back on, and we're good to go. Okay, cool. I do have some weird edges under here too, so I can just go through, grab these, and then just right click and dissolve. So. 
And I'll probably do another check at some point just to make sure I've grabbed all the ones I want. Um, maybe I also want to do this. Maybe I want to grab this too. And then I'll go to my scale tool and just kind of scale this up. Just to give it a little bit more room. I'll keep it a bit softer. Oops. And turn my snap off. There we go. And then I think too, is there... No. Yeah, no. Um, I could also dissolve this edge too, possibly. Yeah, that looks good. So that keeps that nice and soft. Turn that back to that. We'll deselect. Oops, now we got bumpies. So let's undo that. All right. So I'm going to fix that eventually too, um, just by pulling these edges out further. It looks like I have like a weird shading thing on top where it looks like a little blocky. I don't want that. So what I actually want to do is, this is, the reason it's doing that is because this is square and then this part's round. So I want to dissolve this. Let's do that. Let's dissolve that. And I'm going to scale this up. And then I'm going to grab the individual points here at the corners. There we go. And then I'll scale these up. And that'll help keep it round. So now when I go to a subdiv, it's not going to be perfect yet. I'm still going to need to play with those points. But it's going to be a bit better, especially in the center here. You can see on these corners, it's still kind of bumpy. So I still need to go through and figure out why it's bumpy and then fix the bumpiness. Could be these guys here. If we just take those and just move them down, we can turn our subdiv on too. Pull those down a little bit. It seemed to help a little bit. So let's just keep going with that. So I'll just grab those cube points and pull them down. Okay, and you'll see that there's just like one spot, like this little sweet spot that you'll hit where it just lands perfectly. Now, you may not have this thing, uh, but you may have something else. You may have something worse. So the biggest thing is you have to be able to just kind of balance it. Now, part of the issue is you'll see I have a triangle going into a triangle. Okay, so you see there's a triangle here and a triangle there. That's where this issue is coming from. So I think what I want to do to fix this correctly is to dissolve these. Good. And what I'm going to do is just um, drag this across it, like draw the pen tool across this into that area, possibly. So I'm going to go with my pen tool, I'm going to go with my line, I'm going to make sure it's single is off, create end gons is on. And if I go this way, Go. You'll see that I continued this all the way around, so now this is all quads. Oops, I went to the wrong one. This, and this, and that. There we go. So now I'm going to go back to my tool. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going this way. I'll go down to that. Switch to my. Uh, 
move tool or rotate tool just to get out of that and then draw my next one. Where? Over here? Yeah, I think it's just a display of it. There we go. So now we'll turn this back on. We'll push this. All right, so it definitely looks a lot better than it did a minute ago. I could still tweak some of those points and smooth it out, and I definitely will make sure I go through at some point and do that. Okay. So now that I have that, now let me go to my other area. So here's my cube for this one. Now I have two of these, so I'm just going to click on the um, symmetry and just hit C to make that an active ready to go object. Okay. So I'll pull that out, delete the symmetry, drop this back into here. Okay. Now I don't like to keep it as a sub div, so I'll never click on the sub div and then hit C. I want to be able to go and edit it. At some point I may want to go back to the rough version or go back to the smooth version. So I'm never going to go to this and hit C because then I lose the ability to go back to the low res on that. Because um, at some point I may say, you know what would be nice is if I took this and I went to my knife tool in edge mode. And I just added a couple lines right here, grab some faces. Where did I grab those faces? There, I don't want those ones. That's why I got to check 3D too. Make sure you grab the right stuff. And then go to my bevel, or my uh, extrude. And maybe just extrude it. Now it's doing because these are on the same side. I'm just going to extrude it, then switch to the scale tool, and then push it out. There we go. So I may want to add just some kind of little decoration to it so that when it does subdivide, we have basically like these little knobs on top of it. So maybe that's something we want to do. Uh, we could also do it on the bottom here to give it like little pegs or little cushions on the bottom. You know, that would be something else we might want to add. Uh, not big a fan of it right now, so let's do something to that later. Uh, but it's much easier when you don't have the um, subdivision locked into it, when you don't have basically all of these points, oops, all of these points on there, trying to do something like that is very difficult. You want to be able to go back to something like this where you have less points. All right, so now let's start mirroring over the other stuff. So we have the motor housing. Uh, the motor housing is all part of this stuff, okay? Now all of these are fine to duplicate throughout. I can copy all four of those symmetry-wise because those typically do not change. It's going to be the same thing all over it. So I'm going to take all four of these and drop that into a symmetry node. Remember I have to do a null, so I'll hit Alt G, drop this into my symmetry, and now it's over there. And then I will take um, this symmetry node and drop that into another symmetry node. And then pick the one that doesn't have the Z direction. There we go. And then on this one, I'm going to hit C. Yep, that should be good. Actually, I'll leave it like that for now. I may want to come back and adjust it, tweak some stuff, whatever. So I'll leave it like that. I could hit C right now, but I don't want to. Um, cylinders, what's that? That's that piece. Okay, so now this one will do the same thing. Um, and actually, I can just probably drop this into this null because there's no change to that. See, that's why I didn't do it. And what else do we have? Propeller group. All right. So now this one I'm going to do um, individually. So let's go to our symmetry here. And there's my propeller group. And I'll drop another one in. Pick the other direction. Okay, and then I just want to make sure that they're not the same. Okay, so basically when I look at this propeller, you can see that this one is twisting um, from this top right to the bottom left. And then this one is twisting from the bottom left to the top right. Okay, so it's twisting the opposite direction. So that's what I want. These two corners are going to be the same. 
these two corners are going to be the same as far as which direction the propeller goes. Does it matter? Realistically, no. No one's going to see it. It's going to start spinning. It's going to be kind of small on the screen, so we're not going to really notice it. But we just want to keep that in mind as we're going, that we want to keep this stuff like set up correctly. All right, so now let's go back and label stuff. Propeller symmetry, engine guard symmetry, leg symmetry or subdiv, and then this is the body. Okay, so now there's one more piece on this that I want to um, model, and it's going to be a little battery pack that I'm going to include in here. Okay. So where do I want to put the battery pack? I'm going to put it like right there, okay? So I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to scoot it over. I'm going to shrink it down. All right, so uh, again, this doesn't have to be something that is actually a battery pack or could house batteries. You just want it to kind of look like someone looking at this is going to say, oh, that's probably where the batteries go. So even if it's just a battery cover, which is what this one's going to be, um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put this kind of like here, like that. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to add some bevels to this. After I select them, of course. So I can make that a little bit softer. That's cool. Uh, I'm going to add a cylinder to this. And I'll just rotate this down using my object. I can say I want you to be in the X direction. And then I want this to be thinner. That should come down. And this is just going to be the little hinge that's going to hold the batteries in. Or whatever. Open the battery pack. There we go. And then we can just hit uh, caps and add some little caps to this. Oops. Sorry, not that segment. This one. And then change this down to about there. That's good. And then here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to actually shrink this down even further. So I'm going to hit C and then scale this down to about that big. Okay. And I'm going to go to my faces here. Select all those and delete them. Select all these and delete them. There we go. Let me pull this out a smidge. Shrink it down a bit. There we go. Okay, and the idea with this is we want to just give a little bit more like information. So I'm going to take this and just hold control and just drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. Okay, and I'll kind of evenly space these a bit better. Then I'm going to grab another cylinder. Put it back in the X direction, bring it back down, shrink it back up. And then you can see where that battery hinges. I'm going to just keep scaling this in and moving it until it fits right inside there. And then I can hit C and then just go to my scale and just scale this in. Okay, so now I have a little hinge on here so that when I do my texturing, when I do my coloring, I can have the little plastic pieces be one color and then this little bar be another color and it adds a little bit of realism to it. Um, I could also go to this, which is my cube, and let's look at the uh, faces of this. And just to add a little bit of detail to this one, I can go in with a little bit of extrude right here, then another extrude right there, take my caps off, 
And again, it's gonna add just a little bit of detail in this area, so that if this was an actual battery pack, this would be like where you put your fingers and you'd pull it open to get the stuff. Um, you know, what else can we put on here? Um, it's probably good for that. You know, we don't need to go crazy with some of the stuff. Okay, um, another little thing, you know, think of all the little additions you can add to this to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Uh, let's say I went to a capsule. Um, I believe I can slice. No, I can't slice it that way. All right, so let's go to eight there. Cap segments this way. Now that's good. That's probably good there too. Okay. So here's my capsule. I'm just going to scale this down like this. Cool. I'm going to hit C. So it's an object. I'm going to go to the faces. I'm going to grab all of these faces here. And flatten it out. And then let me get inside this thing. There we go. So now I can go to this and just say I want to select Maybe one more out like that, like that. Okay, so I selected those. Now I don't have to extrude it, the face is already there, so I can just pull this down. There we go. So I just stick it inside. Um, needs to be scaled down just a bit. Looks a little bit too chunky. The height of this thing looks a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go to my points. Scale that down some. There we go. So there's a little antenna for them. Now we can also maybe take this and make two antennas. So I can go, there's one there, and there's one there. And just for a little bit of design, let's rotate this one. I'll rotate that one. Okay. And then again, go through and organize your stuff. So these are my antennas. All right, so this here, I'm gonna group these and call these the hinge uh, for door. Hinge pin. door and I can just group all the stuff and say battery okay so everything's nice and organized with this okay so that's pretty much it and then just kind of like group everything together and then I can move everything at once and just kind of set it on the ground okay now one of the cool things about cinema is our ability to do this kind of procedural stuff so we modeled something we um, deleted faces on it, and then we symmetried it, and then we symmetried it, then we can symmetry it, then we can subdivide it, and then we can do all this stuff. So not that we're gonna be doing this, but just so you can see, you could take a cloner and you could drop your null inside the cloner, and then you could make this, let's say radial, let's say the radius is huge, like that. Let's align this to the XZ. And let's crank this up even further. Maybe like 2,000, there we go. And then we could even go into our effectors and add a random effector and randomize their position to that, okay? So if we needed to, we could create this little animation of these things kind of like flying around. Oops, wrong one. Okay, just like we did with our cereal, but we're doing it to these things. And then everything we've done to this so far, I can still go back into that chain and fix the legs or fix the propeller or fix anything. And all of that work that I've done there will daisy chain up to the top, okay? So it's pretty cool. If I textured any of these pieces, all that texturing goes right into the cloner and that. We're not doing this, 
but I just want you to see it because it's important to see that because that's one of the benefits, the huge benefits of cinema compared to other software. I don't know why there's dots here. Why are those dots? Um, twist? Yes, because I have these twists right here. That's why. No? Maybe. Taper? I don't know why the dots are there. Just ignore the dots. Nobody look at the dots. Uh, shrink all this stuff. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and then this is basically the end of the modeling portion of the drone. The next stage of this is that we're going to go through and we're going to animate, or I'm sorry, texture the drone. Okay, so the texturing for this is going to be a bit simpler than we've done before. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to put like little labels on this or stickers or um, decals. Um, so, like these little lights, we could also add in there. That would be something we'd model. Um, these little vents are things we could model into ours, um, but where is the one where I saw the labels? The little stormtrooper in there. Yeah, like this stuff you could put on there. <laughs> stormtrooper. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. Here's some labels on top of this one. It looks like anyway. Okay, so we'll be able to put these things. There we go. So the DJI thing right there, we could add as a label. Um, you could go ultra realistic with this if you had the time. So like all these little things like screw holes, that's something that you would want to add if you're trying to go with something that would be used for a movie that you would want to look completely 100% photorealistic accurate. Um, same thing with these little vents and stuff here. You could definitely do those. Like we could just grab some random um, faces and just start extruding and creating little vent holes in there and it's really neat because it helps break up your surface. Uh, there's my body, there's this, here's faces, okay, so I could grab this face here, and I'll just do it to the one face, and I could extrude this in, and then extrude it in again, and you can see how I can get these little vent holes, and I could put little bars right there too, and help kind of define that shape a little bit better. For this, I think I'm good with just leaving it like that, because I'm not trying to go with ultra-realistic, um, or hyper-realistic as I call it. I'm just trying to get something that looks kind of neat, okay? Um, going beyond some of the stuff you can do uh, is adding some of those extra elements, stuff like these little lights that are on here, the lights that are underneath, you could add those. You could create a controller, same way that we did the drone, you could add that in there too. Um, there's lots of different things you could do. Add the camera, add um, uh, these little things here that are actually holding the legs on, it's kind of a neat touch. Okay, making your stuff. <laughs> oh, <coughs> wonder how that works. Um, these lights are amazing. It's really awesome how they have the lights on there. Okay. So definitely play with it. See what else you can come up with. If you're not liking your drone, it's just coming out like a big mess. Save it. Make a new one. Save it. Make a new one. Or just hide it. None of these pieces are to the point where I couldn't just say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to make a brand new one. And I could just create a brand new drone right here, and all these other parts would automatically just fit right into that spot because I've already lined it up to where those need to be, okay? All right, and then like I said too, make sure you're doing little renders of this to see what it's looking like when it's you know somewhat rendered out because you'll be able to pick out stuff that maybe you can't see very good or maybe you think you can see it very good but you can't when it renders. Like this little split, if I didn't see that split very good I'd want to fix it so I could see it. Maybe it's too small, I need to make it bigger. Maybe it's too big, I need to make it smaller. Okay. Maybe you see something that shouldn't be there. Like what is this dot? Oh, that's just my antennas. Okay. Alright, so uh, continue working on your drone. Um, next uh, 